Right. This chapter is all about chemical reactions. The start of the chapter is pretty much something that we have already done back in chapter number two. Okay. Shuru mein yeh sirf aapko physical change or chemical change se jana ye kehte hain. Woh ab familiarize karenge, discuss karenge changes, physical change woh hota hai jisme substance chemically change nahi hota, same rehta hai. Then substances are formed. Physical changes easy to reverse hoti hain. Mixtures jo hote hain, woh usually easy to separate hote hain. And the mixtures are something that are usually produced out of after physical changes. In chemical changes, what happens uh, that a new substance is made, chemically made during the reaction. We call chemical changes. Not all of them, but most of them are difficult to reverse. They easily separate. Bhi hote. During chemical reaction, energy is taken in, hoti hai, given out. Hoti hai. If energy is taken in, that's endothermic. If energy is given out, that's exothermic. Mostly, we have naturally jada exothermic reactions. Hote hai, then endothermic reactions. For example, if you magnesium ka strongly burn on oxygen, mein, a chemical luminescence, for example, coat Next topic is right about 4.2 equations. Kaise hoti hai? Then let me tell you, any chemical equation is divided into two categories. Number one is word equation. Word equation is pretty simple. Aap reactants left pe products right pe rikte hai. You give an arrow in right in between, the tail of which represents the reactants, the head of which is usually represents the products. And the head is usually towards the right hand side from left to right in the equation. Word equation is very simple and straightforward. They don't require any balance. Okay? When it comes to simple equations, simple equations, we have the law of conservation of mass apply. Okay? The total mass of uh, reactants and products in a chemical reaction are exactly equal. Mass is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So, what happens is that we need to then balance them. For example, a very easy equation is that you have to do starting off with an equation of water, two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen, producing two molecules of water. Okay, word equation is very simple. Chemical equation, we have to balance the numbers with numbers. So, so, to the left of it, we write some numbers to make sure that the number of atoms are balanced on both sides. Remember, we never change the subscripts or superscripts. What we do is that we simply add numbers to their left before the component and we try to balance the number of atoms. We can show it like this. It's a very easy way to show it and tell the students that that's how the number of atoms are balanced on both sides along with the numbers that we have used for balancing. So writing balanced equations is another task that we need to do, which is the most important task in uh, this topic. Uh, 4.2, uh, which definitely requires practice. So, if I ask you if you have to rate yourself at balance of equations, how would you rate yourself? Let's balance the equations in the most sim simplest of ways. Our first example is going to be balancing of equation between a magnesium and a nitrogen equation. A magnesium and nitrogen equation can react to produce Mg3N2, magnesium nitride. How would you balance it? It's the very simple that I've started off with. We are going to write it um, three with the magnesium in the starting, like in the um, reaction area. Perfect. We write a three over here and the equations balance, right? Let's move on mm -hmm. to a second example. All right, let's say aluminum reacts with chlorine gas. It can easily produce aluminum chloride, uh, salt of aluminum. How would you balance this one? I am going to give you the N notation. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. You can either annotate on my screen or you can say it out loud, whatever you like. Um, we are going to add a two uh, um, in the product. Um, in the product, we are going to add two, and then we are going to write three before the aluminium in the reactant area. And that's how we are going to do it. So you want me to write two with aluminum, right? Yes, and two in the product. 
So two over here and two over here and three over here. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Perfect. Okay, let's go with another example. All right. Aluminum reacts with oxygen and it produces aluminum oxide. Um, we are going to write um, three with the oxygen, right, and then two with the product aluminium. Okay. And then four with the aluminum. Good. Perfect. All right. That means you're doing great. So let's move on to something more difficult. Okay. So C2H6-ethane and a fuel can react with excessive oxygen and it can produce for us some carbon dioxide and some water. Okay. How would you balance this equation? First of all, we are going to add two with the carbon dioxide. Perfect. And then um, two with the oxygen in the reactant side. Mm -hmm. um, and then the I think I did it wrong because there's oxygen with the water as well. Uh, okay, continue. Since you're still at it, you can keep correcting yourself till you come up with the right equation. We can put three with the water. Right. And then... Of course, yeah. since you say you, are done, you have done it wrong, so I'm going to go for a single line cut. Um, we are going to put We are going to put four. Four where? Four with the oxygen. Okay. Four with oxygen. Then clearly it's not balanced. Okay. Now, here you definitely need a tip. So I am going to give you a tip for this specific question. Okay. You were doing great, but you were making a, a, a little bit of mistakes over there that students may commonly uh, mom make and they don't know a very specific tip. Now, keep something in mind that I'm about to tell you. Here, oxygen is present as a single species and here, oxygen is distributed as a part of carbon dioxide as well as of water. When there is a single species on the left, which is distributed in two different species on right or vice versa, there it is present in one species on your right or two different species on your left, that specific element is to be balanced at the end. Which means, since there are three elements in this equation, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, you're always going to keep oxygen for the end. You're never going to try a balance oxygen first. You are always going to first of all balance carbon and hydrogen, and after which you are going to balance oxygen. So there are two carbons over here. So I write two before CO2. It's balanced. There are six hydrogen over here since there is a two over here. So I write three over here. And now the hydrogens are also balanced. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to count the number of oxygen on the distributed side first. That is two into two, four oxygen plus three into one, 
three oxygen, four plus three is equal to seven. And the number of oxygen is over two over here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to divide seven by two and I can easily write this over here. So you can either, either write seven over two, or if you don't wanna write it that way, you can write 3.5, okay? Remember, you are only allowed to write a 0.5 decimal, which means you're only allowed to write a half fraction. You cannot write any other fraction, right? Sir, I didn't get this point, could you repeat? You are only, you are allowed to write a balance in decimals, okay? This is 3.5. 3.5 means you're using decimals to balance, but you cannot use any other decimal except 0.5. You can't use 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. No, you can only use 0 0.5. Remember 0 0.5 is equal to what? 0 0.5 is equal to half, which means fractions can also be used. So this becomes actually three and a half, right? Three and a half oxygen or 3.5 oxygen. That's all what you can write. If you don't wanna write that, let's suppose, uh, 0.5s are tricky, you don't want to write that. Fractions are tricky, you don't want to write that. Then multiply the whole equation by two. So this would become 2C2H6. Now 3.5 and multiplied by two would become seven. So 7O2 gives you two twos of four CO2, right? Plus it gives you three twos of six H2O. Now the equation is balanced in whole numbers. Okay, you can either use whole numbers to balance or you can use halves, 0.5 or half fractions to balance. Apart from that, you can only use this fraction. You cannot use this fraction. You cannot use this fraction. Any or other fraction apart from the denominator two are not allowed to use. Any other fraction decimals apart from 0.5 are not allowed to use. Okay, so you can either use halves or fulls, whole numbers, to balance the equation. If you get stuck at something like this, multiply the whole equation with two, and you will be able to come up with whole numbers. Even if you write 3.5 over here, that would be correct. Okay, make sense? Okay, so yes. So yeah, I can, what I can do is that I can simply write 3.5 over here to balance this equation. It is correct either this way or this way. Okay, but that was just a generic rule, writing 0.5 or half fractions is acceptable. The point I was previously trying to make was if any species is distributed in multiple species on left or on right, you always balance that species at the end. Balance all other elements first and keep that specific element for the end. Claire? Yeah. Okay. Let me give you another example. Okay. So I am going to. Clear everything up, and we're going to start with number five. Okay, ammonia NH3 can react with oxygen, can give us an O nitrogen oxide, plus it can give us water. So I have intentionally given you a similar equation. Look. Oxygen is present in single species on your left, but oxygen is part of nitrogen oxide as well as water on your right, which means you can balance nitrogen and hydrogen first, but you have to balance oxygen at the end. Go ahead, try balancing this one. Um. You're going to add three with the water. It becomes six hydrogen. And then we are going to add two with the um, ammonia, NH3. 
Yeah, Amulya. Yes. Okay, if you, even if you don't know the names, that's fine. You can always tell me what the compound is from the formula. Okay, good enough. Go ahead. Now we are going to do nitrogen. So we are going to add two with the other nitrogen. And no. Yes, So um, nitrogen and hydrogen are done. Great. And now the oxygen. Um, um, we will write 2.5 with the oxygen. Very good. So we're going to write 2.5 with oxygen. Okay. So we can either do this or we can multiply the whole equation by 2. Four, five, four, six would also be the correct whole numbers. Either you use whole numbers or you use half or point five. Both ways, it is correct. Okay. Let's see. Number six. I'm going to use the same equation, but I'm going to change it slightly and check that with a small change made, whether you will be able to handle the equation or not. As you can see, the whole thing is same, except for NO, this time we're producing NO2. Okay, go ahead. We're going to first solve the hydrogen, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add two with ammonia. Okay, sorry, two with ammonia, not with water. Okay. And probably and three with water. Three. This is the strategy you previously implied. I understand it. Good one. Okay. Moving ahead. Now for the nitrogen, we write two with NO. NO2. Um, yes, now. Um, we write 3.5 with the oxygen. 3.5 with the oxygen, perfect. Which means it's correct either this way or 4, 7, 4, 6, if everything else is multiplied by two whole numbers. So good, right? Okay, let's good. go for uh, more difficult equation. C4, H10, butane is a common fuel which is used for cooking food at home and in different countries, which when reacts with oxygen produces again the same products, carbon dioxide and water. Um, first, we can go with the carbon, so we can write four with the carbon dioxide. Good. And then, um, now we can go with the hydrogen. So we can write five with the water. Five with water, good. Five to the 10, so we have five with hydrogen. What about oxygen? And, um, for oxygen, We will write six point five with the oxygen. Six point five, great. Or you can either write two, thirteen, eight, and ten with the whole thing for whole numbers. It's entirely up to you. Well, the first way is also easier and is greatly employed by students around the globe. So it's perfect. Whichever one you like, feel like is easier for you, you can employ that. All right. What I'm gonna do. 
is that I'm going to select all of it, delete it, and I'm trying to go with the most difficult equation as possible at this level. And it's going to be a big one. Thing. So K2, Cr2, O7, which is a very famous oxidizing agent, potassium dichromate, and we studied it back in 3.5 when we were naming compounds, can react with hydrochloric acid. And it forms then KCl. It also forms, my bad, I should really be. KCl, it then forms CrCl3. It also forms chlorine gas, the pale green gas. Along with that, it forms water. Go ahead, balance it up. <laughs> the maximum number is then in this equation without going with any decimals is 14. So it's going to be a big one. Try it out. Come on. First of all, we're going to solve potassium. So we are going to write two with the KCL. Perfect. Good start. Second, we are going to do chromium and we are going to add two with the um, CR, CL3. That's chromium. CR is chromium. CL is chlorine. Yeah. And then, um, now we add two with the HCl so that our hydrogen can. Fine. No, we um, I think the two with the ACL is wrong because okay, we need to solve the chloride as well. So, the chlorine, so two. chlorine is the distributed species. Keep it for the end, try to balance hydrogen and oxygen first. Don't forget that wound that I gave you. We are going to put 3.5 with the water. No. Um, 0.5 with water. No, 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 no. Um, there are seven oxygen atoms over here. So? We're going to put seven with the water. Okay. Now it's hydrogen's turn. Mm. We're going to put the 14 with the fluoride. Okay, parting with its seal. So far, so good. There are no mistakes. Now, the last thing. Now, since you have balanced potassium and chromium, Cr, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or Cl is the only thing left. Um, <clears throat> Nine, 
Maybe I three with the chlorine. We're going to put three with chlorine. And we finally did it perfectly. And if you can do this, trust me, it's very safe for me to tell you, you will be able to do any question correctly in your paper, inshallah. The okay. equations that I've given you were the toughest ones among IGCSE syllabus. Be it combustion equations or ammonia's equations or this one, these are the most difficult ones. Which means you can balance any equation of your paper. You won't have a difficulty with that. All right? Yes, sir. Good, yes, sir. great. So we're going to delete everything. Let's get back to the book. Just a quick minute. All right, so we're back to the book. The book next then goes on with types of chemical reactions. And there are many types of chemical reactions, but the book is a little bit tricky with 4.3. So when it comes to this whole type of reactions thing, this old 4.3, which takes you all the way to reduction oxidation reactions, before 4.4, I actually do that part with a little document of mine. So, all right, types of reactions. Okay, so moving on, in case of types of reactions, number one, on basis of heat, there are really two types. The reactions that give out heat, exothermic reactions, the reactions that absorb and are taking heat, endothermic reactions. Any burning of fuels or combustion is a very good example of uh, exothermic reactions. That's why a reaction in which methane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water and giving out heat, which heat is good enough to run our cars or cook our food for us, is a very good example of exothermic reactions. Any reaction that actually requires heat to proceed like in this case, cooking of food or nitrogen and oxygen can react under the temperature of 3000 degrees centigrade to produce the NO gas is an endothermic reaction, all right? You don't exactly need the keys in this case. Make sense? Yes, sir. Next, now the next basis is reversibility. There are two types. Now, first of all, irreversible reactions. Irreversible reactions that are the reactions which cannot be reversed, which means they're unidirectional reactions. They only proceed in one direction, that is forward direction. These kind of reactions are represented by an arrow in which the tail represents the reactants and the head represents the products, all right? This kind of reaction. It's pretty easy to understand reactions giving us products, frying up an egg, carbon reacting with oxygen, producing carbon dioxide. Reversible reactions. These means these reactions can be reversed, hence they're bidirectional. They can even move forward or they can move in backward direction. They're represented by fish hook arrows, a double set of arrows in two different directions. The reactants can give us products or products can react together or break down to form reactants. For example, nitrogen and hydrogen can react to form ammonia. Ammonia, however, at the same time can break down to give nitrogen and hydrogen, all right? Right, sir. Okay. On the basis of, all right, G. I have no other tissue to have to prepare for that. I'm really sorry, but can we just stop here?